love a good prank caller. <laughs> The nine or nine. The nine or nine. The nine or nine. All right, here we go, number nine. You can buy a 30-acre island off the coast of Ireland for less than a million bucks. A local guy uses it for farming. He has uh, fresh water pumped into the island. It's wide open, green space, so the new owner can do anything he or she wants to do with it. Uh, you can get there in just a f in five minutes from the mainland by boat, and there's an old house, uh -huh. or more like a shell of a house that you uh -huh. can try to renovate uh, or build your own castle, whatever you want to do. Sure. It's a steal. Yeah. Convenient. Yeah. yeah. Number eight, if you're into virtual reality, you need this motorized chair. It's fun for the whole family. A totally new way to play with the new Roto VR Explorer. Enhance your play Whoa. with look and turn technology, creating smooth 360 degree movement for never before experienced VR immersion. Is it a real thing or is this a Kickstarter campaign? Well, Roto VR Explorer comes out in October for 800 bucks. Fully adjustable rumble pack. What if you just keep spinning and you, you'll, you get dizzy? Body. Yeah, it's a jump part off. of the fun. Yeah. Oh. All right, number seven, this photo of a bird has not been edited. Oh, wow. Do you see what's happening here? No, no, no. no. In a few seconds, we'll see. I still don't get it. I, I don't get it either. At... Oh, I see. So there's like oh, a wall, it's wall and it's a shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the wall? The, the uh, portion on the right, the beige part. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, is the reflection. I, mean, I yeah. still don't get I it. it. No? Right. See where the... Oh, Lord. If I cared Should more, I, I would... See that? Yeah. Okay, right, that little line across the top? Right, yeah. yeah. That's that... where it starts, and underneath is the water and the reflection of the wall. Right. You know you're talking to the Wonderlick twins over here, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I figure if there are two of them, if they put their half of yeah. brains together, they might figure it out. We take one test and it was, yeah. it was rigged yeah. and yeah. we're labeled Bad forever. Test. I'm tired of yeah. it. Yeah. It's multiple tests for me. It wasn't just a <laughs> wonder. But I'll, we don't I'll play along. Wonderlick. It's a wonder how dopey they are. <laughs> I still don't see it. I don't it understand. hurts me here, inside. Yeah. I don't, you know, don't it doesn't care. hurt me? Right here. Yeah. <laughs> Number six, Japan. Japandi style is getting lots of attention on the socials. Japandi is Japan meets Scandinavia, and the aesthetic is all about the warm and woody tones. It's meant to create peace and tranquility. If you've got clutter, get rid of it, because Japandi is all about clean lines and limited junk. And if you like minimal styles, yeah. muted palettes, soft throw blankets, mm. and a plant or two, Mm. Well, you might be Japandi. Wow. It's lovely. Mm. Very calming. And number five, we were talking yesterday about ways to kill wasps. Oh, yeah. And can you believe it? The method that was passed around on social media is bad information. Mm -hmm. What? Last summer, a video started it all by showing a person holding a half-filled cup of gasoline up to a wasp's nest. Yeah. It does kill the wasps, but a simple Google search will tell you this is not safe. Vapor from gas is flammable. Really? So a simple stray part could end up setting your house on oh, fire. Oh, dear Lord. ER doctors told of cases of people spilling the gas all over themselves before they get to the nest, so they end up uh, drenched in gas and covered in wasp stings. Yeah. Instead, just go to the supermarket, get a can of wasp spray. You can shoot the nest from 20 feet yeah. away. Thank you. And it does work. What? It's not as fun, I would say. There's some adventure, some excitement yeah. there, right? All right, go on, give it a try. All right, number four, there's a pretty good chance you'll never see this giant boot driving down the Stevenson. But then again, you never know. 
Uh, it's the Boot Mobile, and it's usually uh. found on the East Coast near the LL Bean headquarters in Freeport, Maine. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, it's similar to other gimmick cars like the Wiener Mobile. If you're wondering, it's a customized Chevy Silverado. Uh, and if you ever come across the Bootmobile, be sure to get some free merch. In certain areas, the Bootmobile driver might treat people to like ice cream or lunch or something like that. Don't so you remember? Fun. I think this visited here. Remember the weather in a minute I did when I Was got out the of the Bootmobile boot and uh, stuck my boot in Wink Winkle's crotch? Oh, I man. think that might have been. Yeah, uh, I think I'd you're right. Yeah, that. Yeah, remember yeah. that? Oh, we sure. just played that clip not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of years, Larry. Yeah. They're all Everything, blending together. Yeah, all right, number three, don't mess with the red-lipped batfish. Uh-oh. It uses its fins as legs, so it can sometimes look like it's standing. Sure, it does. The red-lipped batfish also has a spine mm. on its head. It's an organ known as an esca that helps lure prey. Wow. But There's you won't see it. a red-lipped batfish in the waters off Folk Street Beach. This fish lives around the Galapagos Islands. Yeah. Wowie. What a looker. Yeah. All right, number two. Someone suggested yesterday that Paul have a segment in which he airs his grievances. Well, here's one that won an Emmy or two in the 90s and early 2000s. Get over yourself. <laughs> I forgot about this. All right, time now for a little something we call Get Over Yourself. Paul's live at the update desk with some words of wisdom for a certain super swimmer. Hey, Paul. Hi there, Larry, Robin, Patrick, all of you fine people out there. This message goes out to Diana Nyad. While we were sitting on our butts this Labor Day weekend eating Cool Ranch Doritos and Bratwurst salad, this lady swam from Cuba to Key West. It only took her five tries to get it right, but hey, she's 64, so good for her. But now, everyone's calling her the hero of the seas, or the greatest human of our time. And to her, I say, hey, Diana, get over yourself. Come on. First of all, first of all, let me just say, I have no use for swimmers. You're like horses, <laughs> only wet. You think you're the first person to wash up on the shores from Key oh, West, no. from Cuba? You know, you did it by choice. Some people have no choice to do it whatsoever. They do it because they're escaping something called persecution from the commie. <laughs> Anyways, you're not an inspiration to me. It's like what I tell my own kids. If at first you don't succeed, don't try again. You're embarrassing <laughs> me. You're embarrassing the whole family. Just quit. All right, stop it. <laughs> And what's with this crazy jellyfish mask that she's wearing? I got stung once by a jellyfish on spring break, 1985, Daytona Beach, Florida. At least I think it was a jellyfish. I'm not sure. I know I drank a little too much Zima and I woke up with crabs. But the point is, I survived. Right. And I don't go bragging to everybody about it, right? Yeah, so yeah. listen up, Diana. You call me when you do something useful, like twerking your way across Lake Titicaca. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Paul Conrad. God bless America. Well done. Out of, off, yeah. Uh, that How were you better at reading the prompter 14 I, I, years ago? I was amazed. I'm looking <laughs> you at didn't that have to stumble on that. Like he's going to mess up eventually, and you just that kept going. That was remarkable. Yeah, I have no idea how that happened. Also, your head looked a little, was a little too off-putting. Everything was very smooth and yeah. very. Yeah, yeah. That was, was a creepy. different time. <laughs> yeah. Much better. You looked more like a man. Ah, like thank, thank you. Kitty Kaka. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, that should have been number one, but wow. we have a number one remaining here. Uh, we had some disco soccer yesterday. Here's a classic Monty Python bit, Germany versus Greece in the Philosopher's football match. And here come the Germans now, led by their skipper, <laughs> Nobby Hagel. They must surely start favorites this afternoon. They've certainly attracted the most attention from the press with their team problems. And let's now see their lineup. The Germans playing 4-2-4, Leibniz in goal, back four, Kant, Hegel, Schopenhauer and Schilling, front runners Schlegel, Wittgenstein, Nietzsche and Heidegger, and the midfield duo of Beckenbauer and Jaspers. And here come the Greeks, led by their veteran centre-half, Heraclitus. Let's look at their team, as you'd expect, it's a much more defensive lineup. Plato's in goal, Socrates a front runner there, and Aristotle as sweeper. Aristotle very much the man in form. One surprise is the inclusion of Archimedes. <laughs> <laughs> well, here comes the referee, Kung Fu Tzu, Confucius and his two linesmen, St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas. We're ready for the start of this very exciting final. The referee, Mr. Confucius, checks his sand, and they're off. Nietzsche and Hegel there. Carl Jasper's number seven on the outside. Wittgenstein there with him. <laughs> Beckenbauer. Schelling's in there, Heidegger covering. Schopenhauer. And now it's the Greeks, Epicurus, Plotinus number six. Aristotle, Empedocles of Achaegus and Democritus with him. There's Archimedes, 
Socrates, there he is, Socrates. There's a ball, there's a ball. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be bringing you back to this exciting contest at the moment. Well, there may be no score, but there's certainly no lack of excitement here. As you can see, Nietzsche has just been booked for arguing with the referee. He accused Confucius of having no free will, and Confucius, he say, name go in book. And this is Nietzsche's third booking in four games. And who's that? It's Karl Marx. Karl Marx is warming up and looks as though there's going to be a substitution on the German side. Obviously, manager Martin Luther has decided on all-out attack, as indeed he must with only two minutes of the match to go. And there's Archimedes, and I think he's had an idea. Archimedes out to Socrates. Socrates back to Archimedes. Archimedes out to Heraclitus. He beat Hegel. Heraclitus, a little flick. Here he comes on the far post. Socrates is there. Socrates is oh, in. Oh, oh, oh. The Greeks are going mad. The Greeks are going mad. Socrates scores. But beautiful cross mark of Eden. The Germans are disputing it. Hegel is arguing that the reality is merely an a priori adjunct of non-naturalistic ethics. Oh, Changed by the categorical imperative. He's holding that ontologically exists only in imagination. And Marx is claiming it was offside. Well, but there we go. The <laughs> <laughs> it's a nine and nine. That's so good. Oh, nine and nine. Yeah,